if I squeeze my muscles, it will close. This process is very, very familiar to me. I was able to do like a full makeup look using just one bionic arm. Hey, I'm Tilly and I'm gonna be watching some bionic arm prosthetic videos. Deep extra. Oh, so she's got layers. This is this is actually Christy, and I know Christy. She's a legend, and she is a pro in the gym. But her prosthetic has like layers, which is something mine doesn't have, except for like the skins, if you can call it that. But she's basically like crafting the prosthetic, which is really cool. And they work. She's weightlifting like a pro. I must say, not my favorite hobby, but <laughs> she is slaying. So what what do you mean when you say it's got layers? What? Well, I mean my arm just kind of comes as an arm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like. I'm pretty sure, well, I know you can unscrew the palm, mm -hmm. but other than that, it's kind of just one thing. And I mean, you've got like the socket and like the cases and like all of that. But she actually, when she gets to the gym, she actually has to like put the socket on first and then like the cases and then tighten it and then put the top bit, which is actually the weightlifting bit, which is interesting. You know what, one of the main questions like I get asked is like, how do they actually stay on? And I couldn't tell you. I actually <laughs> couldn't tell you. Like it is mad. I guess because like the fit is just so good that it's just not gonna fall off. And I've actually done TikToks about this where like my dad is pretend to be a, like somebody who's trying to mug me. Yeah. And like literally tried to like take it off. And it just doesn't work. It doesn't like, come off at if all. If I want it to come off, it'll come off. But if I don't want it to come off, it's staying firmly on. Really? Which so is weird. You can see why hers stays on though. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Mine's just magic. <laughs> I know this kid as well. <laughs> Says getting fitted for a new prosthetic arm. And I know for a fact this is a hero arm because he now has his hero arm, which is absolutely awesome. And yeah, this process is very, very familiar to me. It's really weird. It's like being casted, like if you broke your arm. I know because I broke my arm and I was like, oh my God, this is the thing. Like they actually put a cast on you kind of. I kind of like it, but like other people, like I think it's very like hit or miss. But basically they put this sort of thing on you like kind of like wallpaper or something. <laughs> and then it like is really tight. So it like gets the perfect sort of fit of your prosthetic and it later turns into a socket. But because it's so tight, it's so hard to get off afterwards. So as soon as that like hardens, I've literally been like, had to clear the room and like me and like the prosthetist and like, try to rip this thing off because sometimes it just doesn't want to come off. But it is fun. It's like the beginning of the journey for a new prosthetic. So these bionic arms are 3D printed by Open Bionics and they're called the Hero Arm. They also have a Hero Gauntlet, which is for people with partial hands. So a couple of like fingers or so. And they have the Hero Flex, which is the activity arm for things like weightlifting, hobbies, drumming, ever like a drumming one. This next hook, this is a prosthetic and it's very similar to the hook I had. Same in the way it works as well. So there's no tech in it. It's like sort of a, a harness. This is actually really interesting because it is interesting to me how some people really get on with this prosthetic. I think because I was so young, I was like, I actually couldn't like barely even pull the strings, but people do wear these like every single day. And this guy's like a dad, so he must do its job. It must be good. <laughs> but yeah, mine was all plastic. His is metal, so I feel like he's like, a level up, he's hardcore. Oh no, it's me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this is me <laughs> um, doing the latest makeup trends. Makeup is like, honestly the craziest hobbies I probably get. I mean, oh, makeup is so crazy. I know you guys probably don't get it. When it comes to dexterity, doing your makeup is like hard. <laughs> I don't know if you ever tried eyeliner, mascara. People are scared when I pick up that mascara one, but like I have so much trust in myself now that I can do it, no bother. But it's because people who are able-bodied are scared of the mascara one. Mm -hmm. And actually it's a really funny story how I got into this because I probably, like honestly speaking, probably never would have thought I could do my makeup with prosthetic arms because it's so like dexterous. I broke my arm like over Christmas one time um, and it was my right arm and I'm like right-handed ironically. So I had a big cast from like my shoulder right the way to the tip of my arm. And I always say like, you think breaking your good hand and having a right with your bad hand is bad enough. But like I had one arm, I had literally one arm to deal with and my like least dominant one as well. Like, I do nothing with this hand. So I was just like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? And I was around 13 and I was getting into like makeup and things for the first time. And so I asked for some like makeup stuff for Christmas. Um, and then it all arrived and I was itching to play around with it. like. 
It was so bad to the point where I could barely even like feed myself with one arm. It was a struggle. I was like, but I just want to play with my makeup. So my mom was like, well, why don't you just try it with a bar and a comb? And I was like, don't be silly. Like, surely not. But I did it and I mean, I made a right mess. Like I got foundation all over like my sister's white curtains and bedding. But I was able to do like a full makeup look using just one bar and a comb which was absolutely crazy. I didn't even think I could do that. And I definitely got, be got better, like a lot better with time. And as soon as I posted that, people were like really into it. But like you've got like the young girls who'd watch the makeup videos and then you've got like the techie middle-aged dudes. And it's funny because I feel like on my Instagram, it's just like a place where they all just like Meet. collide. <laughs> and it's just like, what? Ooh, hang on. Okay, so she's cracking eggs, which is a challenge. But like, I don't think I've seen this prosthetic before. It's like realistic coloring, but it looks like more like geometric and futuristic in a way. That's really interesting. I'm not sure of that brand. She's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> if, I feel like it must be so hard when you actually have the human hand not to like intervene. So do you like when you pick up an egg, can you feel the pressure of how, like, how hard you're picking something up? It's weird because there's no like haptic feedback in the sense of like a sense of touch. Mm. Like you get a vibration when you change the grip mode, but when, in regards to like grip strength, like you really don't know. And so I'm always judging my grip on something like visually. So you gotta be careful. I can control like how slowly the hand closes. So obviously I'll stop it at a certain point um, and it won't crush something. It sort of reacts to pressure in the sense that if I was to shake somebody's hand, it wouldn't like crush. Like a lot of people ask that question <laughs> as well, but you could probably crush an egg with it, I wanna say. Next one, we got a lovely girl and it says Barbie arm, which intrigues me. She's stunning. She's all dressed up pink like Barbie. And this is one of the realistic prosthetics as well. Also a harness. So I don't think it would actually move, but I don't want to jump to conclusions. But that's actually quite realistic. Actually, now she's got it on. It's actually quite realistic. And I think that, what are they like? I think she has got like freckles and stuff on that, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Can you kind of explain why some, why like there's a difference in realistic and kind of the hero uh, arms that you have? I think it's just personal choice. Like it was never really a choice when I was growing up. I talk a lot about how freeing it was to work with Bonux and the hero arm and have all these funky colors. Like I cover mine in glitter and stuff now, like on the daily. And that's just something I find to be really fun. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that everybody likes it like that, you know? Like everybody's different. So you brought some arms with you, or some of yes. your arms from the past, and we're kind of going to go through your journey during that time. What, so what is this first realistic arm? So this arm is the probably like one of the first myoelectric arms I received. Um, so this hand obviously is really realistic, very different to the ones that I wear here today. They were actually based off of my sister's hands because sisters are said to have similar hands. So there are literally like freckles, wrinkles, nails you could paint. I did paint them back in the day, it was so fun. Now I get acrylics, but you know, <laughs> that was only a recent discovery. I wore these around like nursery time. It was good for me at the time because it was like, I realized that prosthetics were meant to like replace a hand um, and I associated it with a hand. I had a problem earlier with the hooks and that like I was so young and I didn't actually know what my parents were doing really. Like I didn't know this was a hand that was meant to replace the ones that I was missing. So this was good in that respect. I finally like made sense of the situation and they were fun to have. Like I would definitely like go into school like and I would have no hands one day and then I'd come in the next day with like this really realistic prosthetics and like suddenly I was like the most popular kid in the playground <laughs> like because they were like what she didn't have hands yesterday and like it looked so real they were like what the heck that's so weird but at the end of the day I didn't really get along with it because of the functionality like it moved really really slow and it couldn't do any of the activities I wanted to do and like it, it couldn't open wine enough to hold like a cup even so I found that quite like debilitating mm -hmm. like more of a hindrance than a help so I stopped then and also they were quite expensive. And I keep like, they're fun to play with though. <laughs> it's horrifying the way you're bending Ooh, those back God. though. <laughs> and how, so how much was that, that one again? The first myelectric one I had was around 24 grand, mm -hmm. but it ranged up to, as I got a bit bigger, like 36 grand. If it weren't for my community getting behind me in the very beginning, I wouldn't even be wearing prosthetics today. But my community up north, they managed to fundraise like 24 grand for the first pair within like 24 hours. It's amazing. She's insane, that's a grand an hour. <laughs> it's mental. So the rest of them are from Open Bar and X. 
But this is sort of like the steps to becoming the hero arm. So all these were like sort of prototypes, they like can't be found anywhere else. Um, but the idea is the same in the sense that they, you know, don't look like a realistic hand. These chunky bits here is the battery and the battery used to be a lot thicker. Like I've got the battery there. These are all 3D printed and you can kind of see like more of that 3D printed DL. Like they're a lot more polished yeah. this side, whereas these are like, that is 3D printed right at the beginning. The button is like this tiny button in the middle. Um, whereas this is a lot bigger like surface area. So it does just make it easier and it looks cooler. So that was a win-win. <laughs> I really like the sound this makes though. Oh, that is satisfying, isn't it? Give it to the mic. Is there a difference in functionality as well on these? Yeah, so these ones are also classed as myoelectric because they are moving and they're muscle sensors. But this is a multi-grip, whereas that old one was a single grip. Like that one, only one finger moves, like the thumb moves up and down. Whereas this one, all the fingers were capable of moving. And it is similar to like the menu system that I use in these hands, but the order was completely different, which really throws me off now. <laughs> the cases were really thin compared to the ones that I wear today. They snapped all the time. I've got like loads of old cases of like prototype cases where they were literally just so thin and would just snap. So that changed. Um, this is the wrist tightener. This is actually mad. I forgot about this. <laughs> um, the wrist tightener is down here, which is weird. It like literally changes at the base of the arm. Like here now you've got it like there. And that's there and you can like twist that and pull it out to like tighten and loosen the prosthetic. But clearly, that used to be on the elbow, which I actually forgot about. I went to San Diego Comic-Con when I was like 10 and it was one of the first sort of jobs I did with Open Bionics. And I was basically modeling some arms based off of the video game Deus Ex Mankind Divided, I think that's the name, <laughs> which was really cool. It was the child version of like Adam Jensen's arm. And so I sat on a panel that was like, hours long <laughs> with all these like experts like game developers and like Sammy from Open Bionics. When I was there, like there was this one problem that we just hadn't even thought of and that was ventilation. So the prosthetic had no ventilation in it whatsoever. And you're probably like, well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what does that do? When you have no air yet into the prosthetic, then your like arm can like swell. It would get to the point where you, like it, my arm would like ache and I would like get stuck in there. But yeah, before the ventilation, it was an inconvenience, but it was also like painful. Right. So it's a good <laughs> thing that we fixed that. So the next one is kind of similar. It was just sort of the next step in revolution. So this, all these triangles, this is ventilation. Right. This is proof of ventilation. <laughs> this is actually where the battery goes now. Yeah, so this, this definitely must have been after that one because the wrist is where I have the wrist now. Um, the sensors are where I have the sensors now. It's 3D printed ventilation. So this is the Hero Arm by Open Bionix and it's what all these arms, bar the first one, were leading to. But yeah, this is called the Hero Arm for good reason. We've now got like Iron Man cases, Spider-Man cases, Elsa from Frozen cases, um, just loads of fun. Um, but like they're all muscle operated like the other arms were. Um, the sensors are in here and in here. And if I squeeze my muscles, it will close. If I flex, it will open. And then if I flex again, you'll see the button on the back flash green and the thumb came around there. That's basically me changing the grip mode. And it's literally those two sensors which control the entire hand. So beyond that point, when you do all the other little grips, that kind of works like a menu system, which a lot of people don't know. So there are six grip modes in total. You've got this grasp like so. Um, also this thumb clicks in and out. Then if I open all the way, change the grip mode, the thumb comes around. This is just a normal close like that. Then if I press the button, it will flash pink. That's not just for decoration, it actually has a purpose. <laughs> and now if I squeeze that same muscle I was squeezing earlier, only two fingers will come down and that's because I've pressed the button. And I can flex to open, flex again, change the grip mode. And this is the tripod, which I call peace sign. That's what I use it for. And that also comes down like a little pincer. And that's all those grips, you get them in like the small hand. So all the kids can do that. But if you're in the medium to large hand, you can even press it one more time and you can do a one finger pinch and a point like this. 
This might be seen. How do you charge it? Or how, 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 how does that happen? Good question. So yeah, the battery is in here, and basically it's like obviously you get it with the arm, and then they there is like a charger that comes with it, and you unplug the battery, and then you can like plug it into this sort of charging dock, but then that just plugs into the wall. How much is it now to make something like that? So there's various packages, but these ones are now at about 20,000. Okay. They are, however, on the NHS now as well, which is an absolute godsend. It was something that I campaigned for loads. I was part of all the NHS trials as well, trying to prove to the NHS that yes, this does work, please fund it. They eventually took it on, but it's a it was a whole process literally years later they took it on, which was like a real cool celebration. Um, so now they offer multi-grip prosthetics on the NHS. 